Hi there and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about my 2017 favorites. So before I get into this, I just want to mention a few quick things first. Uh, first of all, not all these books are five star reads for me and not all my five star reads are on this list. But they are all the books that stuck with me the most and the books that I think I enjoyed the most this year. Um, which kind of makes it weird that not, not all my five star books are on this list. But here we are. Uh, so there's, there's 21 books here, and I'm just going to go through them. They're in no particular order at the current time, but they're just the ones that I really enjoyed reading, and uh, let's just get into it. So first, starting off with Confessor by Terry Goodkind. This was a real blast to the past for me. I started reading the Sword of Truth series when I was in grade 10, which seems like an age ago. And I, I have always loved this series. Uh, despite maybe the criticisms about Jane Goodkind's writing style, but this one really brought back a lot of good memories for me of being in high school and uh, loving reading, so I was really pleased that I picked this one back up, and I'm excited to start like the new sub-series. Next, uh, the first book in the Diviner series by Libba Bray. I have always loved Libba Bray. I started reading her when I was in junior high, so it was really fun to start this new series. And I really think that the first book was the best book in the series, so it was really nice to read this. And it's such, such a beautiful book. I mean, look at that. They just, unfortunately, have not kept with this quality of publishing in the other volumes, but it was just like a really fun jazz age read. An unexpected favorite for me was Swimming Lessons by Claire Fuller. I read this with my friend because she asked me for a recommendation that I had been hearing hype about. Not that I had specifically heard very much hype about this book, but it was on the list of like pretty co covers that I remembered, so I was like, this one seems kind of cool, maybe we could read it together. And we did, and she also really loved it, but I thought it was just a really cool frame narrative. I really like how all of the letters in it also had been placed in books, and it talks like it gives a description of that book and you can go up and look the book up and see what it was about and sometimes I did have connections to what was going on which I thought was really cool and it was just like a really excellently written book and I, I would love for everyone to read this. Then one of my more recent reads, To Kill a Mockingbird, I read this for the first time this year and it blew me away. I thought the narration was great, the writing was great and I just, I super enjoyed reading this. Then my first true crime book, I read The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule this year, which is of course about Ted Bundy. Anne was Ted's friend, so it gave a really interesting perspective on the whole entire situation and what this unraveling mystery meant to her as someone who knew him personally, which I found really interesting. The writing in this is also super great and it made me really want to read more of Anne Rule's books because she's written a whole bunch of them. So, yeah, I was really, really pleased with this one. I actually have two Margaret Atwood books on this list. The first one is the first Atwood that I've ever read, which is The Handmaid's Tale. Um, it was not my favorite that I have read by her so far, but I did really enjoy this book. I thought it was, like, I don't want to say fun, because it wasn't really fun, but I thought that the, the style was really interesting and the story itself was really interesting. Um, and a little bit scary because it mirrors a lot of the things that are happening currently. Uh, but yeah, it was just a really well written book. So the other one that's on the list, of course, is Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. Both of these books have been turned into television series. This one's more of a historical fiction. It's based on a real murder that happened in Canada in the 19th century. And it's kind of about what happened and who did it, but also about like criminal psychology, which is kind of cool. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun to read, but it is quite massive. Then we have Station Eleven by Emily St. John, Emily St. John Mandel. And I thought that this was just a really interesting SF book. I like SF a lot. Um, and this is SF in speculative, as in speculative fiction, and one of my favorite, like, what destroyed us 
has always been illness. It is one of the most powerful things that I think I've read was in War of the Worlds when War of the Worlds when all of the aliens were killed by illness instead of various other things that could have killed them. Um, it shows that we're not very invincible as we might always think we are. So I thought that reading this one was really interesting and I thought it was really cool with how they played with what happened after the, the flu. Then we're going to go to the first book that I read this year, which is Various Positions by Martha Schwabes. And this one's on the list because it's definitely one that has stuck with me. Um, it is about a ballet school in Toronto and um, like sexual harassment and sexual abuse and the awakening of, you know, sexual desire in teenage girls and what that means and how it's different in this very restrictive environment that they are in because they're at this ballet school. And this is probably one of the better books that I've read this year. It's her debut novel actually, so that was also very interesting to read from. And yeah, I just, I have a real love in my heart for this book and it's definitely one that I think I'll probably reread again. Next is The Better Mother by Jen Su Fong Lee. I read this for my book club and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's about uh, the beginning of the AIDS epidemic in Vancouver. There's also a bit about uh, what it was like to grow up poor there and a whole bunch of different things. Uh, it's about race, it's about just about everything that you'd probably want from a book like this and I really enjoyed reading it. I thought it was just a fantastic novel and it's definitely one that I'm going to keep in my collection for a long time. This list, of course, would not be complete without the book that should have won Canada Reads, and that is The Break by Katerina Vermetti. This was voted out on the first day for stupid reasons, which I have talked about many times on my channel because this is one of my new favorite books. It is her debut novel. She has have some published poetry, which I have not read, but this is a great book. It's about a family and sexual assault and racism and what it means to be an Aboriginal woman living in Canada, which isn't something that I have read a whole bunch about, which makes me feel bad because I feel like a bad Canadian having saying that, having said that, but I think this book makes it super accessible. There's a mystery to it and it's just a really fantastic read and I think that everyone in Canada should read this and that everyone should read it. Before I stop talking about this book, I have to mention the reason why I got voted off of Canada Reads because it's absolutely ludicrous. Uh, the panelists believed that there weren't enough good men in this book and it wasn't going to be a book that they could let their sons read because it didn't have strong good depictions of men. When it's book about women, told from women's perspectives. Yes. Anyways, I totally think you should read this book. It's absolutely amazing and uh, whether you're in Canada or not, I think you will really enjoy it. Not surprising to anyone, this list does have quite a few books on here that have won literary awards in Canada and have been uh, connected to Canada Reads. So of course we have Something Furious by Carmen Aguera which won the 2012 Canada Reads. And this is a memoir uh, written by Carmen Aguera, obviously, about her youth as a revolutionary in South America. Her parents were from Chile and they got expelled from the country after the revolution there and came to live in Vancouver. And then her mom took her and her sister back when they were teenagers to fight in various different Latin America countries for the socialist dream or communist dream. It was very unsure, but like unclear what one, but like there was dreaming and there was workers' rights and social infrastructure. So, and I love this book. I thought it was super well written. It was super interesting. I didn't want to put it down. The only thing that I said in my review that I would have liked more of is pictures because I thought it was really cool the few pictures that they had in here so I would have liked to have seen more pictures though you know again we have to recognize that more pictures might not have existed because they were 
revolutionaries and fighting the good fight and didn't want their identities to be known by the government. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Then we have The Queen of the Tearling by Erica, Erica Johansson. This is the first in the trilogy and the only one in the trilogy that is on this list. I did really love this book. I thought it was a really interesting blend between fantasy and SF. And I thought that the bits that were frame narratives were cool. And I really, like, I read this book so quickly, I couldn't put it down. The rest of the series I found a little bit disappointing, but I would highly recommend reading the first one. Another book that really stuck with me was All Quiet on the Western Front. Last year or the year before, I read Testament of Youth by Vera Britton, and it is, of course, her memoir about World War I as a British woman. And this one is a novel but it's also kind of an autobiographical novel because uh, the author did fight in World War I for the Germans. And I thought it was just a really interesting perspective to have on the war. I think that the Germans get demonized a lot in World War I and World War II. I mean, justifiably so in some cases, but this one really brought to light the fact that a lot of people that were actually fighting the war were young men, the same as our young men that went, didn't really want to be there, didn't really understand what was going on, and were just there because politicians decided that this was what was going to happen and this front needed to be moved and all that sort of thing. So it was really interesting reading about that and kind of their revelations as they're fighting. Then they're coming to the conclusion that this man that they have just killed is there for the same reasons that they are, has the same feelings that they have, and has a family back home that, you know, they also have families back home. So it was, I think, a really powerful novel and a really good one. It's also quite short, and I would highly recommend this to everyone. Then I have Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. I didn't know that this one would make the list or not, because I was really reluctant to read it. I read The Girl on the Train several years ago, and I just, I didn't really like it very much. It wasn't for me. But I really loved this one. I thought it was really good. I thought that the narration style was really good. I I liked the idea of the book too. And there was just so many layers to the mystery that it was more difficult for me to figure out who did it. But there was also this historical aspect to the whole thing which I found extremely interesting and intriguing. So. I like this book has stuck with me and it's something that I think I would read again even though I know the answers now because the other thrillers that I've read aren't really things that I think oh yeah like that's something I really want to revisit but yeah the it's just a very great book extremely quality and I really really loved it next I have a discovery of witches by Deborah Hawk and Hawk Harkness and this isn't a book that I thought that would be on this list when I first started it because I didn't really know much about it. I bought it on sale at Chapters when it first came out and I just saw this cover and I was like, this seems like a really cool book. I'm going to buy it and I'm going to read it. And then I didn't read it for like eight years. And I'm glad I have read it and I think that this at this t point in my life is a good time to read it. However. I didn't know that there was vampires in it, so that was like a little bit of a surprise for me. And I wasn't prepared. And at first I was like, I don't like this. I really hate it. But I actually did like it. I liked it a lot. I have ordered the second book in hardcover because I want them to match. And like, I don't know, I was just so impressed with this book. I also really like how the main character is also a historian of science because that was my degree and it was just really nice to see that in fiction so I'm really looking forward to reading the second book of the series there's also time travel like it's just so many surprises in one book but yeah it's definitely a favorite of this year and I'm so excited to read the next book of course we have to include Robert Jordan on this list this is the first Robert Jordan book I've read it's the first book in the Wheel of Time series and it was phenomenal. So, my dad has always read these books. He's read passages to me before, but that was when I was younger and they were inappropriate for me. They they were inappropriate for me, but 
you know. And uh, it's been a series that I've wanted to read since I started reading the Sword of Truth series. And I've asked my dad several times for these books because most of his books are in boxes in the basement instead of displayed on shelves like all of my books are. So he would always say, yeah, yeah, I'll get it to you. It's like, no problem. And like, he never did until one day he came out of the basement and he was like, Colleen, I have something for you. And I come down the stairs and he's just like there with the whole entire series. And I was like, well, thanks. This is taller than me. I can't really carry it. I did make it into my room with them all. But, uh, so I've been working my way very slowly through it as I've only read the first book in August, but it was really fantastic. And our writing quality is just something I haven't seen before in an epic fantasy series, though I hear Brandon Sanderson is also very good, who I'll also eventually read. He's on my list. Um, Thoughts on Tomes, Sam talks about them quite a bit, and I don't know where to start. But I think I might start with his first book. He's also, of course, uh, ghostwritten the last few books of this one after Robert Jordan died. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But my dad is reading his latest series right now, and he really likes it. But, like, this is everything that you want from an epic fantasy. It starts off with a farm boy. There's magical women. There's, like, mystical beasts and a big bad. So I'm really excited to see where this series goes, and I really need to get on, like actually reading it. Then I think we have our only like YA middle grade book on this list and that is Illyrial by Garth Nix. This is the middle or second book in the Old World trilogy and I loved it. At first when I saw it I was like this is a real big book. I don't I don't know but I really loved Illyrial the character who the book is named after. She, she just wants to be a librarian, she just wants to hang out with books, and she wants a dog. And I have never related to a character more than her. And then she goes on an adventure. So it's like, what more do you want? And like, I don't know, I just really love this book. It's my favorite in the series. And Lyriel is my precious. And so is Dog. I love the dog. Then, of course, we have Anna Karenina, and this was an unsuspected favorite. This was my goal book for February, and I started on page, like, 200 or something, because I tried to read this book before. I hadn't gotten that far through because Anna was really annoying. And, which is not to say that I didn't find her annoying through the rest of the book, but I just focused on other characters. I find Anna herself a little bit whiny, but, um... The other characters in here were so precious, and I want to give them all hugs. And the movie with, with Keira Knightley in it was also amazing. I highly recommend that as well. And this is a book that I will definitely be rereading. It makes me want to read more Tolstoy, which at the time I didn't think was possible. But yeah, very dense, very long, but very, very good. The second to last book is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dewar. Um, some people that I have talked to complained about the chapter lengths, but I thought it worked really well for this book. I liked how it went through both of their whole lives. I just thought the concept of the book was really cool. I love novels set in World War II. Um, as you can tell, there was two books about World War on this list, and I read, I think, a couple others this year, so it's always something I enjoy reading about. And this one is just really special. I think it's a really great book. I think that even if you don't like war fiction, it's definitely one that you could still enjoy. And yeah, like, I just, I couldn't put this down. I stayed up late one day after work and finished it. So you always know it's a good book when that happens. The last book on this list is actually the second last book I read this year, and that was The Midnight Queen by Sylvia is a Hunter. This is the first book in the Noctis Machia series. I believe it's a trilogy. I have ordered the other two books and they should be coming quite soon and I'm so excited for them. This wasn't a book that I thought would be a favorite. I thought it was just going to be like your run-of-the-mill fantasy. It starts off with the heist and trouble and then just gets better and there's so many different characters in it that I really love. There is a professor who just wants to sit in his room with his books and not be troubled. There is a 
a boy who can tr turn into an owl and doesn't want to deal with the reality of his problems. There's a girl who just wants to learn how to use magic and live her life and her sister who's just like an innocent sweet little little buttercup of a person and I think needs to be protected and hugged. But the characters in this book were amazing. Like I love the owl and just like it was so fun and that's why I read fantasy. I read it for fun and laughs and sometimes a little bit of like light romance and I haven't found a lot of fantasy books that have really done that for me lately because like the Sword of Truth is just wacky and the Wheel of Time is quite serious but like this was just fun and I loved it so much and I can't wait to continue on this series so I made the favorites list and you know I'm pretty happy that it did. So I mean like out of a hundred books I think having you know five one-fifth of them 20% on this list is pretty good like it's pretty good. I love the ball really much. Like, if you're looking for a book recommendation from me because you think that you like the things that I read, this is them. These are the books that I would recommend to everyone. These are my book recommendations that are coming out of 2017. I haven't had a lot of time to reread lately, but if I did, these would be the books that I reread. So yeah, them are my favorites. So, coming up next on my channel, because you, you thought you had enough videos, but you haven't, is uh, going to be my new-to-me authors for this year. Um, it's going to be kind of similar to my favorites, because I've read a lot of new-to-me authors, I think. But, you know, we'll put some books up here, see how it looks, and then we might change it. I might leave off some new-to-me authors that I didn't like that much, <laughs> basically what I'm saying. But, um, yeah, that's that. So... We're getting, we're getting close to the end. We're getting close to the bookshelf reorganization part of this whole entire week, which is going to be super fun. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but it's going to be super fun. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you've read any of these books, please let me know about them in the comment section below. But until then, we'll see you in the next video.